Hi, I'm Nick Haraz. Beauty Essentials Unit just launched for Final Cut. It's a collection of 15 powerful filters that you can use for smoothing and image restoration. In this video, we're gonna to get to the heart of it by taking a look at Beauty Studio. We'll learn how we can leverage it, not to mention harness its power by using mocha masking directly in Final Cut Pro. Let's hop in and see what this effect can do. Now that I'm here inside of Final Cut Pro, I have a clip inside of a project that I would like to apply some beauty correction to by softening some of the details in the skin. In order to accomplish this, I'm gonna click on the effects browser and under my video effects, head to BCC Image Restoration, where I'll find BCC Plus Beauty Studio. I'll select it and drag and drop it to the clip to see that it has an instant impact on my shot. To see this clearer, I'll close down the browser, click the check mark next to Beauty Studio to see the before and after results. To see what Beauty Studio is currently affecting, I could head to the view parameter and change it from output to matte. Anything that is currently white, Beauty Studio's smoothing parameters will affect. Anything black is not included in the selection. We can refine the pixels that are selected in the skin by going into the matte properties. I'll head back to view and change this to output. Right underneath the smoothing parameters is our matte parameters, where we see a color A and a color B. This will help us define the skin even further. I'll click on color A, click on the eyedropper in the Mac OS color picker, and then select a pixel in her skin. We can see an immediate effect. I'll now select the color B and repeat those steps by selecting the eyedropper and select a pixel in her skin that is a little bit lighter. I'll close the Mac OS color picker. Let's head back to the top of the effect and under view, change it from output to matte to now see the results. We can see that several more parts of the shot are now included in the selection because they are white. If needed under matte, we can refine this further to try to isolate the skin. We can do that by adjusting the hue softness, the saturation softness, and the luma softness. And while I see that I'm selecting additional pixels inside the subject's skin, I'm also selecting pixels in the overall shot that I don't want to be included. For this, I'm gonna rely on Mocha to perfect this. Under view, I'll switch this back to output. At the top of the effect, I'm gonna click on the Mocha mask button. Here we are in Mocha in the Essentials workspace. I can select one of several tools to define a mask. I'll choose the magnetic layer for in this instance, there is a lot of contrast around the edges of her face. I'll click to make an initial point. I'll drag around the edges where the magnetic tool adapts quite well so I can make my desired shape. Once I come back to the first point, I'll double click. The shape is closed. A layer is created in the Layers tab. I'll press Command A to select all the points of the shape and click and drag inward to make it a little bit softer. In order to track the shape of her face, under the Essentials tab, we can track translation, scale, and rotation for the movement in this shot. If you take a look at the timeline, the green arrow represents where I made my initial mask. And it's from this point where I'll click the Track Backward button in the Essentials tab. You can see Mocha does quite a good job tracking the face. Once it reaches the beginning of the clip, I'll move back to the green point where I made my initial mask and click the track forward button. Now that this track is complete, I'll scroll through it and can see that at certain points in time, the mask falls off her face. This is really easy to adjust. I'll select the series of points in this case by dragging a lasso around and click and drag earlier in the clip to refine the mask. The best part is because this data is separate, Mocha will interpolate this data, meaning that there's no need to keyframe on every single frame since that tracking and shape data is separate. Now that I have what I want, I'm gonna click the X button at the top of the Mocha interface and press save in order to see this inside of Final Cut. Here in my timeline, in order to make sure that the Mocha data carried over, I'll click the disclosure triangle next to pixel chooser and next to view mask matte, click the checkbox to see that that mask was carried over. Under the mask properties, I'll reveal them and then increase the mask feather. I'll deselect the view matte mask. And now if I click 
the checkbox at the top of the effect, I can see that Beauty Studio is limited to the subject's face. Let's take a look at this a little bit clearer. Inside my Final Cut viewer, I'll increase the percentage from 85% to 200 so we get a nice clear look at her skin. As I zoom in on the subject's face, I can see that it's removed some of the detail that is in fact desirable for this shot. It's here where I'll click the disclosure triangle to close the pixel chooser properties and refine the smoothing properties. One great value is to go to smallest details and decrease the amount even to a negative number in order to bring back some of the detail so that Beauty Studio isn't so strong. A great technique is to constantly click off and on Beauty Studio to see how you are affecting the subject's skin. As we can see, bringing back some of those smallest details makes this effect more realistic. We can also decrease the small details, the medium details, as well as the master amount applied of smoothing to our shot. In terms of quality, it is set to fast by default. And if we want it to be more precise, we can choose that from the drop down menu, not to mention additional levels of detail, which will apply more smoothing to our shot that we might want to change using the individual's, the smallest, small and medium detail parameters. Now that we have a shot close to what we want, I'll close the smoothing section along with the matte section and head to the bottom of the effect where we can also apply a glow now in Beauty Studio, glow can help soften shadows and increase exposure, especially in the skin, as well as emulate real world glass filters. Let's enable this effect. You might have not noticed any change in the subject's face, and that's because the threshold is currently too high. I'll decrease that value all the way down to zero, so we can see that it acts almost as an exposure effect to the subject's face. If I fit this clip to the window and then click the before, and after results, while this glow is desirable, I'll bring down the brightness and also mention that we can extend our mocha mask to include more areas of the subject's skin. That's really easy to do by simply clicking the mocha mask button once again. So we can choose to include or not include parts of the mask. In this instance, let's say that we didn't want to include the eyes, which are part of the face track. We could select the layer one within the layers tab and under the X spline tool, I'll click and hold to select the X plus tool so that we can add to the mask. I'm gonna define a shape around her eyes and I'll double click on that shape to close it. In order to check its accuracy, I'll press the Z key temporarily and zoom in on the image and then just perfect the mask on the existing frame that I drew it on. If I move my playhead, I can see that all of that tracking data transfers over to the new mask. Even better, if I press option one, this will enable you to see a view of all of your mats. The option is under the view menu, mats, mats. While in this view, I'll continue to work with the X plus tool by selecting the layer and then making another selection around the additional eye. I'll use the Z tool to zoom out. And now what I'd like to do is add another shape to move with the mask. Let's say this was the neck. Another way of doing this is to either select the X spline tool or the magnetic lasso and making a selection around the neck that we'd like to include. There's a little bit of overlap there, but you'll see that this is a separate shape currently called layer three. Let me double click to rename this neck and I'll click layer one and double click to rename that face. In order not to have to retract this additional layer that I've just created, I'll select neck, go to the layer properties, and make sure the link to track option is set to face. If I move my playhead backwards, we'll see that the neck mask moves with the head. We can easily make adjustments on specific frames by selecting points within the mask to perfect our track. All of this information is gonna be carried over into Final Cut, I'll just close down Mocha by clicking on that X icon and choosing save. We'll see in Final Cut, all of this data carries over. Head to Pixel Chooser, view the matte mask to see that information. And finally, let's press the full screen playback button on the bottom right of the interface to see the after result of both the glow as well as Beauty Studio's smoothing properties. And that's how you can get started with Beauty Studio inside of Final Cut, part of Beauty Essentials Suite no subscription for Final Cut users.
Check out some of our other tutorials to get familiar with Mocha inside of Final Cut, including Ian Anderson's eight-part series to get you started with Mocha.